Now what has been described here is a standard pattern considering a no-wind situation. The only time the holding pattern execution will differ is when wind is present, and let's face it, especially in North Dakota, wind will most likely be present. Not to worry, it's now just a matter of applying simple wind correction techniques to assure that the inbound course is always one minute long. As an example, say the wind were howling from the northwest at 20 knots. If the pilot were to fly the previous teardrop entry outbound for one minute, the wind would move them significantly further across the ground due to a much faster ground speed. As the pilot turned back inbound, he or she would begin timing upon reaching wings level and realize that it takes considerably longer, say 1 minute and 40 seconds, to fly inbound and cross the fix. No problem, the outbound leg can just be adjusted to fix this discrepancy. As a rule of thumb, the outbound leg could be shortened by half the inbound's timing discrepancy. And since the inbound leg was 40 seconds too long in this example, the outbound leg can be shortened by half of that, which would be, say it with me, 20 seconds. And so the outbound leg would be flown for 40 seconds in hopes of adjusting the inbound leg to one minute. The pilot can then continue to make adjustments and fine-tune the outbound timing so that the inbound leg is always one minute long. If there was a tailwind on the inbound leg, then just the opposite correction could be made on the outbound by extending the outbound leg to cause a one minute inbound. Okay, we're getting close, but now it's time to back up and remember that the previous example had the wind blowing not from a perfect northerly direction, but from a northwest direction. So not only will the pilot experience a timing issue, but he or she will also experience a crosswind issue. The fix here is simple. The rule of thumb for a crosswind correction is to first establish a proper freeze heading to maintain the inbound course. Take note of the amount of crosswind correction required to hold that course, and then plan to triple the correction on the outbound leg. Because remember, there's nothing a pilot can do to correct for a crosswind during the standard rate turn after crossing the fix or the outbound turn, and so all of that drift must be compensated for on the outbound leg. And while it's always nice to talk about the holding pattern as a simple racetrack procedure, the pattern itself can take on all kinds of shapes when factoring in timing and crab corrections for wind drift. Here's what a properly flown pattern would look like with that wind from the northwest. Take that same pattern, but apply wind from the southeast, and you end up with a shape similar to this. These examples illustrate what an airplane's track would look like when flown properly in a holding pattern that is subject to wind correction. When all is said and done, it's the pilot's responsibility to ensure that the airplane remains on the protected holding side of the fix, maintains the proper inbound leg time or length in the case of a DME hold, and complies with all ATC instructions for further clearances or further turns in holding. The AIM also states that the pilot should report the time and altitude when reaching a holding fix and report any time leaving a holding fix. For the check ride, the instrument rating PTS requires that the pilot first exhibits adequate knowledge of the elements related to holding procedures, changes to the appropriate holding speed when three minutes or less but prior to arriving at the holding fix, explains and uses an entry procedure that ensures the aircraft remains within the holding pattern airspace for a standard, non-standard, published or non-published holding pattern, recognizes arrival at the holding fix and initiates prompt entry into the holding pattern, complies with ATC reporting requirements, uses the proper timing criteria where applicable as required by altitude or ATC instructions, complies with pattern leg lengths when a DME distance is specified, uses proper wind correction procedures to maintain the desired pattern and to arrive over the fix as close as possible to a specified time, maintains the airspeed within plus or minus 10 knots, altitude within plus or minus 100 feet, headings within plus or minus 10 degrees, and tracks a selected course, radial, or bearing within three-quarter scale deflection of the CDI. 
As your instrument training progresses, remember that throughout your career as an instrument rated pilot, you may be required to hold over any number of fixes in just about any conceivable location and in many different weather conditions. Together with your UND flight instructor, practice holding that requires non-standard elements such as DME or GPS holding. Take advantage of the moving map on the UND aircraft's multi-function displays, but always remember that there is no substitute for being able to copy a clearance, visualize the hold on your mental moving map, and execute a successful turn using the tried and true 5 T's. Learn and practice these principles and you'll find that you can hold anywhere, at any time, with the confidence of a true professional instrument rated pilot. We on the UND Aerocast staff hope you've enjoyed this episode and stay subscribed for more quality UND Aerospace video flight training lessons. From the front seat of a Seminole at UND Aerospace, this is Matt and Rob. Have fun and fly safe. <laughs> <laughs>